You know, I give up on things occasionally. I've been trying to build an arc. I look at the ruler. I can't even figure out what a cubit is. I mean, I don't know how big to build the arc. So I'm going to forget about it, even though it's raining 40 days and 40 nights or something like that here in the Northwest. This has been an interesting week. It really has been. I, I ask myself many times, is it worth it doing videos on YouTube? Nobody watches. I mean, I do a video that I think is profound, and then I notice that people look at the title. I have always been weak in writing titles. They look at the title, and they say, I'm not even going to watch the video, especially when they look at the picture and they say, it's old. This is bad, right? I'm not sure that it's so bad. I was thinking about this as I watched the situation in the East unfold. You know, things have changed. I'm a guy that's left in an air of sending letters in the post office when the reality is the post office is about as useless as a whip socket on an automobile today because we have the internet. Let's see. One is free. One costs 48 cents or something and keeps going up. It's easier just to write the message, push send, and it's taken care of. It's a different world than I grew up in. My idea is, even though I try to keep up with things by reading PC magazines about gaming and stuff, so I'm on top of the game. I know what's happening, but I'm rare among old people. I mean, I started out with a VIC-20 computer and moved my way up to a Commodore 64, and I thought it was big. In my photo file today, there's one picture that has more memory use than my entire Commodore 64. And I have thousands of those pictures today. I don't understand all, at all how it all works. I just know that things are changing. Young people don't want to look at old people anymore. That's why when I was in commercial broadcasting and had talent, which I think I still have, Many people watched, and the demographics which kept me employed were of young people. But now they can see me, and they know that this is an old guy, and I don't have to hear what he's got to say, because he's old, I know what he's going to say. Isn't it amazing? So maybe it's, in a way, hard on my ego, but it's the way it is today. And you know something? Maybe us old guys, we really had better pass on. We better pass on the message. You young people, you're our hope. You know, it hit me this week. It, young people are so wise. It hit me this week when I get a phone call. It's from a young man that I'm a spiritual advisor, and I have been such for many years. I mean... To a young person, the fact that I started mentoring him when he was like in the seventh grade and now he's a senior in high school. Been a lot of confiding that took place between he and I. Something about the video I did called Catholic No More <laughs> was distressful to the young man. Didn't stop him from having a crisis. So in the midst of the crisis, he calls me on the phone and he says, Is it time for me to mentor you? To be your spiritual advisor? I had to think about it. But there's a time for everything. I'll listen to what you have to say. <laughs> well, I, I listened to what he had to say, and it was a problem that we kind of worked out. But it has to do with confidence. I can't go there. But I'm still his mentor. It's just that in my mentoring, sometimes I have to say, listen, Catholic doctrine, it stops here. This is what I think. This is what the church thinks. You, my dear boy, must figure out which of those two paths you're going to follow. See, there was a big earthquake. The church that St. Francis of Assisi built fell down. A friend of mine that's a Franciscan priest called me and said, Jer, you think there was a message there from God? It could be. You see... To give you the background on that, St. Francis of Assisi, the story is, Christ appears before him and tells him, Francis, rebuild the church. 
And St. Francis thought he was talking about a physical building. That's the building that fell down. Maybe he was talking about rebuild the church because it's taken a wrong path. The minute I noticed that the church had taken that path that they had taken in those years, so many years ago, where they were utilizing violence and brutality, they weren't carrying the mandate of Christ, who comes back from the dead, by the way, to tell the church, love one another, it's a new commandment. Maybe maybe we should pay heed to that church of St. Francis falling down. This has been such an encouraging week. I have to comment. It was good versus evil, and we all saw it on high definition on our TV sets. The message of Gandhi, Martin Luther King, in 18 days does more to bring peace to the world than all of the years that we have used missiles and guns and troops in the East to try to establish democracy. <laughs> it's not funny, ha-ha. It's tragically funny. Because we old people, me, I don't consider myself old, but the old people think that's the way that I can beat it into your head, that I can tell you to have democracy, but don't let any of those Muslims get involved with democracy there in the East. It's a Muslim country. Give me a break. If you're going to have democracy, there's going to be Muslims. But there is no fear there. And if Israel cannot figure this out, and if President Obama cannot figure it out, we who watch, the watchdog of the public, the media, we will figure it out. The two scenes that will graphically ever be etched in history are a group of peaceful people asking for freedom because they know that freedom is as necessary as air. And into their peaceful demonstration as recommended by Gandhi, who must have smiled from above, rides a puke. I would call him something else, but I try to keep my language clean. A puke comes riding in with a yellow shirt on a horse and a whip, and he beats them. And he's followed by a bunch of other pukes. And that Murdoch... See, I call him, if you, I mispronounce it, Murdoch. I would rather say something else close, but I won't. But I am a holy man. I will never even mention that. It's like profanity, his name. It was violence, what the United States has used. It did not work, did it? Peace. Nonviolence. You can only establish peace through peace. They're contradictory terms. Peace and violence, they're opposites. You can't make peace out of violence. Why can't the world of old people like me figure this out? It is a mystery to me. But the hope, Israel is trembling in their boots, worried about what these young people from the Internet will do. I'll tell you what the young people did when the Muslims had to pray. The young people formed a circle of protection around the Muslims and allowed them to pray. And the young Muslims looked at the circle of protection and they thought, One God, we are all interwoven. We are together. That's the hope for the world. Now we must work to make sure that the pukes do not beat us with the clubs anymore. And we will only do that by groups of people non-violently protesting. We never, ever want to be riding a camel or a horse with a whip going in there. 
The song was right many years ago in the 60s. The times, they are a-changing. Peace.